I never saw it coming. One moment I was standing in my living room, confronting Trent about his suspicious behavior and unexplained absences. The next, I found myself trapped in the dark, damp confines of our basement, a place I hadn't set foot in for years. "'What is the meaning of this, Trent?' I demanded, my voice trembling with a mix of fear and outrage. "'Why are you doing this?' Trent's normally warm, brown eyes had turned cold and calculating. "'I'm doing what I have to, Avery,' he said, his tone laced with a chilling finality. "'You were never meant to see the truth.' I watched in horror as he slammed the metal door behind him, the sound echoing through the cavernous space like a death knell. Panic gripped me, my heart pounding against my chest as I frantically searched for a way out. The basement was a maze of shadows, the air thick with the musty smell of neglect. I stumbled through the darkness, my hands tracing the rough, uneven walls, desperately seeking an escape. But the more I explored— the more it became clear that Trent had trapped me in this dank, forgotten corner of our home. "'Trent, please!' I shouted, my voice cracking with desperation. "'Let me out of here!' There was no response, only the eerie silence that seemed to taunt me, mocking my helplessness. I sank to the floor, my knees trembling as the reality of my situation sank in. How could this be happening? Trent, the man I had loved and trusted for nearly a decade, had turned against me in the most unimaginable way. Flashes of our life together played in my mind, the way he had swept me off my feet with his charming smile and his grand promises of a life filled with adventure and success. I had been so blinded by his facade, so eager to believe in the fairy tale he had spun. Now, that fairy tale had shattered, leaving me trapped in a waking nightmare. As the minutes ticked by, my mind raced, searching for a way to escape. I knew I couldn't give in to despair— not when I had so much to live for. Somewhere out there, my friends and family were wondering where I was, and I couldn't let them down. Summoning every ounce of courage I could muster, I began to explore the basement more thoroughly, searching for anything that could aid my escape. The space was cluttered with old boxes and forgotten relics, but as I sifted through the debris, a glimmer of hope emerged. Tucked away in the corner, partially obscured by a tattered tarp, was a small metal toolbox. I yanked it free, my fingers trembling as I popped it open. Inside, I found a set of old, rusted tools, a hammer, a screwdriver, and a pair of pliers. A wave of determination washed over me. I may have been trapped, but I wasn't helpless. With these tools, I could find a way out of this nightmare and reclaim my life. Gripping the screwdriver tightly, I set to work. My mind focused on the task at hand. I would not be a victim, not in my own home. Trent would pay for what he had done, and I would make sure of it. As I tinkered with the tools, a sense of purpose coursed through me, pushing back the fear that had threatened to consume me. I would find a way out of this basement, no matter what it took. The old screwdriver felt heavy in my hand, a makeshift weapon, a makeshift weapon against the darkness that surrounded me. I pried open the panels of the door, searching for any weaknesses, any sign of an escape route. Time seemed to stand still as I worked— the ticking of an unseen clock the only measure of the seconds that passed. With each failed attempt, my frustration grew, but I refused to give in to despair. Then, just as I was about to give up, my fingers brushed against a small, hidden compartment in the door's frame. My heart raced as I pulled it open, revealing a set of keys, Trent's keys. Trent, you fool, I muttered, a bitter smile spreading across my lips. Did you really think you could keep me trapped here forever? I wasted no time in fitting the key into the lock, turning it with a soft click. The door swung open, and I stepped out into the dimly lit hallway, my senses on high alert. The house was eerily quiet, save for the muffled sounds of Trent moving about upstairs. I crept forward, my footsteps light and cautious, until I reached the living room. That's when I saw it. A stack of papers, neatly arranged on the coffee table. They were financial statements, bank records, and legal documents— all bearing Trent's name. As I sifted through them, a sinking feeling settled in the pit of my stomach. "'Oh, Trent,' I whispered, "'what have you done?' The papers revealed a web of financial fraud, hidden offshore accounts, and shady business deals. It was all there, the damning evidence of Trent's betrayal, his carefully constructed facade crumbling before my eyes. I quickly gathered the documents, stuffing them into a messenger bag I found nearby." 
With this evidence, I would be able to expose Trent's crimes and bring him to justice. Just then, I heard the distinct sound of footsteps on the stairs. My heart raced as I ducked behind the couch, holding my breath and praying that Trent wouldn't find me. Avery? Trent's voice called out, the hint of panic in his tone betraying his composure. Avery, where are you? I watched as he strode into the living room, his eyes darting around the space. He approached the coffee table, his brow furrowing as he noticed the missing documents. No, no, he muttered, his hands trembling. This can't be happening. I seized the moment, stepping out from my hiding place and confronting him head on. Looking for these, Trent? I said, holding up the incriminating papers. Trent's face paled, the color draining from his features. Avery, how did you— how did I escape? I interrupted, my voice laced with disdain. It seems you underestimated me, dear husband. Now, it's time to face the consequences of your actions. Trent's expression morphed from shock to panic as he realized the gravity of his predicament. He opened his mouth to speak, but I held up my hand, silencing him. Save it, Trent. I've seen everything, and I'm not going to let you get away with this. With that, I turned and headed for the door determined to seek the help of the authorities and ensure that Trent's reign of deception and fraud came to an end. With the incriminating documents in hand, I knew I had to get out of the house as quickly as possible. Trent's panicked expression had told me all I needed to know. He would stop at nothing to keep his secrets hidden. I hurried toward the front door, my heart pounding in my chest. But just as I reached for the handle, I heard Trent's voice behind me, dripping with a chilling mixture of desperation and rage. Avery, stop! You can't leave. You have no idea what you're dealing with. I turned to face him, holding the bag of documents close to my body. I know exactly what I'm dealing with, Trent. You're a fraud, a criminal, and I'm going to make sure the world knows it. His eyes narrowed, and for a moment I saw a glimpse of the man I had once loved, the charming charismatic figure who had swept me off my feet but that man was gone, replaced by a twisted, desperate individual willing to do anything to preserve his carefully constructed facade. "'Please, Avery, you have to understand,' he pleaded, taking a step closer. "'If you leave, you'll be putting yourself in grave danger. I'm only trying to protect you.' I scoffed, unwilling to be swayed by his empty words. "'Protect me? You locked me in the basement, Trent. You betrayed my trust and everything we built together.' I won't let you manipulate me anymore. I turned the doorknob, but before I could pull the door open, Trent lunged forward, his hands grasping at the bag. We struggled, each of us refusing to let go, until a sudden movement from the corner of my eye caught my attention. Lena! I cried, recognizing my neighbor standing just outside the open door. Lena's eyes widened as she took in the scene unfolding before her. Without hesitation, she rushed forward, her hands pushing Trent away from me. Get away from her, you monster! Lena shouted, her voice laced with fury. Trent stumbled back, a look of pure panic on his face. Lena, you don't understand. I understand perfectly, Lena interrupted, stepping in front of me protectively. I've seen the way you've been behaving, Trent, and I won't let you hurt Avery anymore. Trent's gaze darted between Lena and me, his desperation palpable. You have to believe me. I'm trying to keep her safe. If she leaves, she'll be in grave danger. Lena scoffed, her expression unwavering. We both know that's a lie. Now, get out of our way, or I'll make sure the police hear everything. Trent's shoulders slumped in defeat, and without another word he stepped aside, allowing Lena and me to pass. As we hurried out the door, I couldn't help but glance back at him, a tinge of sorrow mixed with the overwhelming sense of relief. Once we were safely outside, Lena turned to me, her eyes filled with concern. Avery, are you all right? What's going on? I took a deep breath, my hands still trembling from the ordeal. Lena, I need your help. Trent? Trent is not who he seems. He's been involved in criminal activities, and I have the evidence to prove it. Lena's expression hardened, and she nodded resolutely. Then we need to get this to the authorities, immediately. You're not alone in this, Avery. I'm with you, every step of the way. As we rushed toward Lena's car, I knew that with her by my side, I finally had a chance to bring Trent's deception to an end. The road ahead would be difficult, but I was more determined than ever to reclaim my life and see that justice was served. As Lena and I sped away from the house, a sense of relief and determination washed over me. 
I had escaped Trent's clutches, and now, with the incriminating documents in hand, I had a chance to expose his crimes and reclaim my life. "'Where are we going?' I asked, gripping the bag tightly. "'To my place,' Lena replied, her eyes fixed on the road ahead. "'We need to gather some people we can trust and figure out our next move.' I nodded, knowing that I couldn't take on Trent alone. This was a battle that required a unified front, and I was grateful to have Lena by my side. When we arrived at Lena's cozy townhouse, she ushered me inside, her expression serious. "'Avery, I know this is a lot to process, but we need to act quickly. Trent is dangerous, and he's not going to give up without a fight.' I took a deep breath, trying to steady my nerves. "'I know, Lena. That's why I need your help. I can't do this alone.' Lena placed a reassuring hand on my shoulder. "'You're not alone. I've already reached out to a couple of people who can help us.' Just then, the doorbell rang, and Lena hurried to answer it. I watched as she ushered in a familiar face, Marcus, my childhood friend. "'Avery!' Marcus exclaimed, pulling me into a tight hug. "'Lena told me what happened. Are you all right?' "'I'm okay, Marcus,' I replied, squeezing his hand gratefully. "'But Trent? He's—he's he's not who I thought he was.' Marcus's expression darkened. "'I always knew there was something off about that guy. What did he do?' I quickly explained the situation, outlining Trent's web of deceit and the damning evidence I had uncovered. Marcus's face tightened with a mix of shock and anger. "'That son of a bitch!' he growled. "'Don't worry, Avery. We're going to make sure he pays for what he's done.' Just then, the doorbell rang again, and Lena ushered in another guest, Eliza, a lawyer friend of hers. "'Avery, I'm so sorry to hear about what you've been through,' Eliza said, her voice laced with concern. "'Lena told me everything,' and I'm here to help in any way I can. I felt a surge of gratitude, knowing that I had the support of these powerful allies. Together, we would take down Trent and ensure that he faced the consequences of his actions. Thank you all for being here, I said, my voice steady. I know Trent is a formidable opponent, but with your help, I'm confident we can expose his crimes and bring him to justice. The group gathered around Lena's dining room table, poring over the documents I had retrieved, Eliza took charge, her legal expertise guiding our discussion. This evidence is damning, Avery, she said, her brow furrowed in concentration. We can use it to build a strong case against Trent, but we'll need to be strategic in how we approach this. Marcus chimed in, his eyes gleaming with determination. Whatever it takes, we'll do it. Trent's not going to get away with this, not on our watch. As I listened to my friend's unwavering support, I felt a renewed sense of purpose. I was no longer alone in this fight. Together, we would bring Trent down and reclaim the life he had stolen from me. Seated around Lena's dining room table, the group poured over the documents I had obtained. Each of us determined to uncover the full extent of Trent's deceit. Eliza, the savvy lawyer, took the lead, her sharp eyes scanning the financial records and legal paperwork. This is worse than I thought she murmured, her brow furrowing in concentration. Trent has been involved in a complex web of fraud, money laundering, and other illicit activities. We'll need to tread carefully if we're going to bring him down. Marcus, my loyal childhood friend, clenched his fist, his knuckles turning white. That bastard, he growled. After everything he's put Avery through, he deserves to rot in prison. Lena placed a calming hand on Marcus's arm. Easy, Marcus. We can't afford to be reckless. Trent is dangerous, and we need to make sure we have an airtight case against him. I nodded, my own anger simmering just beneath the surface. Lena's right. We need to be strategic, and that means gathering as much evidence as possible. Trent won't go down without a fight. Eliza cleared her throat, drawing our attention. Well, I have an idea. It's risky, but if we pull it off, we might be able to catch Trent red-handed and expose his crimes to the world. We leaned in hanging on her every word as she laid out her plan. It was a bold, daring scheme that would require all of our resources and unwavering determination. But as Eliza spoke, I felt a surge of hope. This was our chance to take back control and make Trent pay for his betrayal. "'Are you all in?' Eliza asked, her gaze sweeping across the table. Without hesitation, we all nodded, our resolve steeled by the prospect of justice." In the days that followed, we set our plan in motion, each of us playing a crucial role. Lena and Marcus used their connections to gather additional information about Trent's activities, 
while Eliza worked tirelessly to ensure our legal strategy was airtight. Meanwhile, I found myself delving into the world of digital espionage, hacking into Trent's accounts and monitoring his movements. It was a risky endeavor, but the thought of Trent's reckoning fueled my determination. As we inched closer to our goal, the tension in the air was palpable. Trent seemed oblivious to our machinations, continuing to go about his day-to-day -day life with his usual air of confidence and charm. He has no idea what's coming, Eliza said, a triumphant gleam in her eye. I couldn't help but feel a twinge of pity for the man I had once loved. But that sentiment was quickly overshadowed by the thirst for justice. Let's make sure he pays for what he's done, I said, my voice resolute. With the final pieces of our plan in place, we set the stage for Trent's downfall. The day of the big event arrived, and as I stood alongside my allies, I felt a sense of power and determination that I had never experienced before. When Trent arrived, his usual swagger replaced by a hint of unease, I knew the moment of reckoning had arrived. It was time to confront him, to expose his crimes, and to ensure that he faced the consequences of his actions. As I stepped forward, the incriminating documents in hand, I took a deep breath stealing myself for the confrontation that was about to unfold. As Trent approached, his gaze darting around the crowded event space, I felt a surge of adrenaline coursing through my veins. This was the moment we had been waiting for, the chance to bring him down and expose his deceit once and for all. I stepped forward, the incriminating documents clutched in my hand. Trent, I called out, my voice ringing out across the room. We need to talk. Trent's eyes widened as he recognized me, and a flicker of panic crossed his features. He tried to maintain his composure, but I could see the cracks in his carefully constructed facade. Avery, he said, his tone laced with a forced calmness, what are you doing here? I'm here to expose your crimes, Trent, I replied, my words dripping with venom. Your web of fraud and deception ends today. A hush fell over the crowd as they sensed the tension in the air. Trent's gaze darted around the room, his eyes pleading for someone to intervene, but no one moved. I don't know what you're talking about, Avery, he said, his voice wavering. This is all just a misunderstanding. I stepped closer, holding the documents up for all to see. Oh, it's no misunderstanding, Trent. These documents prove that you've been embezzling funds, manipulating financial records, and even laundering money. Your entire empire is built on a foundation of lies. Trent's face paled, and I could see the beads of sweat forming on his brow. Avery, please, you have to understand, I was only trying to protect you. Everything I've done, I've done for us. I scoffed, the disgust evident in my expression. Protect me. You locked me in a basement, Trent. You betrayed my trust and everything we had. And now, you're trying to cover up your crimes by playing the victim? The crowd erupted in murmurs, and I could see the realization dawning on their faces. Trent's carefully crafted image was crumbling before our eyes. This is all a lie, Trent shouted, his desperation palpable. Avery is the one who's been unfaithful, not me. She's the one who's been stealing from me. I shook my head, unwilling to let him deflect the blame. Nice try, Trent, but your lies won't work this time. The authorities have already been informed, and they're on their way to arrest you. Trent's eyes widened in horror, and he took a step back his gaze darting around the room in search of an escape. But there was nowhere for him to run. Not this time. No, this can't be happening, he cried, his voice laced with a mix of fear and fury. Avery, you have to believe me. I'm the victim here. I watched as the realization dawned on him, the walls closing in as his carefully constructed world crumbled around him. There was no more room for his deceptions, no more chances to escape the consequences of his actions. It's over, Trent, I said my voice firm and unyielding. Your reign of terror is at an end. Just then, the sound of sirens echoed through the air, signaling the arrival of the authorities. Trent's face contorted with a desperate panic, and he made one final, futile attempt to flee. But it was too late. The police officers swiftly apprehended him, their faces grim as they read him his rights. I stood there, my heart racing as I watched Trent being led away, his desperate pleas fading into the distance. The confrontation had been intense, but it was over. Trent's downfall had been set in motion, and I couldn't help but feel a sense of relief wash over me. As I watched the police officers lead Trent away, a wave of emotions washed over me. Relief, 
yes, but also a lingering sense of disbelief and sorrow. Despite everything he had done, a part of me still couldn't reconcile the man I had married with the criminal he had become. The crowd around me erupted in a flurry of activity, people whispering and murmuring, their expressions a mix of shock and awe. I stood there, clutching the incriminating documents, feeling a strange sense of both triumph and emptiness. Lena, Marcus, and Eliza quickly gathered around me, their faces etched with concern. "'Avery, are you okay?' Lena asked, placing a gentle hand on my arm. I took a deep breath, trying to steady my racing thoughts. "'I don't know,' I admitted, my voice barely above a whisper. "'I never thought it would end like this.' Marcus squeezed my shoulder, his expression hardening. "'He got what he deserved, Avery. That bastard's gonna pay for what he's done to you.' Eliza nodded in agreement her eyes filled with a fierce determination. We'll make sure he faces the full consequences of his actions. The evidence we gathered is solid, and the authorities are already building their case against him. I nodded, feeling a renewed sense of purpose. Then let's make sure justice is served. I want Trent to lose everything. His business, his reputation, everything he's worked so hard to build. The days that followed were a whirlwind of activity. Trent's arrest made headlines, and as the details of his crimes began to unfold, the public's outrage only intensified. Suddenly, those he had once manipulated and charmed turned against him, eager to see him brought to justice. His business empire crumbled, as clients and partners severed ties, unwilling to be associated with his tarnished name. Investors pulled out, and the once-thriving company found itself on the brink of collapse. Trent, once the picture of success and affluence, was reduced to a tattered shadow of his former self. I watched from the sidelines as he desperately tried to defend himself, but his lies and excuses only served to dig him deeper into a hole of his own making. At one point during a heated court hearing, Trent turned to me, his eyes wild and pleading. "'Avery, you have to help me,' he begged, his voice trembling. "'I can't go to prison. You have to make them see reason.' I stared at him, my expression unwavering. You had your chance, Trent. You chose to betray me, to betray everything we had. Now you have to face the consequences of your actions. Trent's face contorted with a mix of rage and despair. You're going to ruin me, he shouted, his outburst drawing the attention of the court. The judge, unimpressed by Trent's outburst, shook his head in disgust. Mr. Clark, your actions have already ruined you. The evidence against you is overwhelming, and I have no choice but to remand you into custody until your trial. Trent's shoulders slumped in defeat, and as the bailiffs escorted him away, I couldn't help but feel a pang of pity. Despite everything he had done, a part of me still mourned the man I had once loved, the one who had so skillfully hidden his true nature behind a facade of charm and success. But that man was gone, replaced by a desperate, broken individual who was now facing the full weight of his crimes. As I watched him disappear, I knew that this was the end of an era, the end of Trent's reign of deception, and the beginning of a new chapter in my life. As the dust settled around Trent's dramatic downfall, I found myself standing at a crossroads in my life. The man I had once loved and trusted was now facing the consequences of his actions, and I was left to pick up the pieces of my own shattered existence. In the weeks that followed, I dove headfirst into rebuilding my career and reclaiming my independence. With the support of Lena, Marcus, and Eliza, I was able to secure a new job as a marketing consultant, using my skills and experience to forge a fresh start. You know, Avery, I'm really proud of you, Lena said one evening, as we sipped our wine at her cozy townhouse. After everything you've been through, you're picking yourself up and moving forward. I smiled feeling a sense of pride and relief wash over me. It hasn't been easy, but I'm determined to make the most of this new chapter. Trent may have taken so much from me, but he can't take away my strength and resilience. Lena reached across the table, giving my hand a gentle squeeze. And you have us, Avery. We're here for you, no matter what. I nodded, knowing that I was truly blessed to have such loyal and unwavering friends by my side. I don't know what I'd do without you all, You've been my lifeline through this whole ordeal. Marcus, who had joined us for the evening, leaned back in his chair, a mischievous grin on his face. Well, what are friends for? We're just glad we could help take that son of a bitch down. He's getting what he deserves. And you, Avery, you're the one who came out on top. 
I couldn't help but chuckle at Marcus's blunt assessment. That may be true, but it hasn't exactly been easy. Trent was a big part of my life for so long, and letting go of that has been challenging, to say the least. Eliza, who had been quietly listening, leaned forward, her expression thoughtful. I can only imagine how difficult this must be for you, Avery, but you've shown incredible strength and resilience. You're not defined by Trent's actions. You're so much more than that. I nodded, feeling a surge of gratitude for my friends and their unwavering support. You're right, Eliza. I'm ready to move on and focus on the future. Trent may have taken away my security and sense of trust, but he can't take away my drive and determination to rebuild my life. As the evening wore on, we shared laughter, exchanged stories, and made plans for the future. I found myself feeling lighter, more hopeful than I had in months. In the days that followed, I threw myself into my work, pouring my energy into developing innovative marketing strategies for my clients. The more I immersed myself in my career, the more I felt a sense of purpose and fulfillment returning to my life. And as I navigated this new chapter, I couldn't help but reflect on the journey that had led me here. Trent's betrayal had been a devastating blow, but with the unwavering support of my friends and my own indomitable spirit, I had emerged stronger and more resilient than ever before. I may have lost my fairy tale, but in its place I had gained something far more valuable, the knowledge that I was capable of overcoming even the darkest of obstacles, and as I looked towards the future— I felt a renewed sense of excitement and possibility, ready to embrace all that lay ahead.